Kia ora and welcome guys, so my name is Siobhan and in this video I want to run through my blogging workflow. I started blogging in around about February 2013, so I've been blogging for about two years now. I'm by no means an expert, I've got no popularity from blogging, but I enjoy the process of writing and sharing my ideas out there. I think it's a good idea too if you want to as well. Currently I'm going through this transition from optometrist to tech or entrepreneurship, and I kind of want to share that process through a blog. I'm doing it with videos, but I want to do it with a blog as well for something that's more evergreen or content that isn't quite exciting for like a newsletter or a video, I think it worked really well for a blog. And I've used a number of blogs in the past like WordPress and Ghost, but I've kind of set on using this particular blogging platform called Hugo or a static site generator called Hugo, which will actually generate my blogs for me, which I think is going to be better. It'll make more sense when I hop onto the computer and show you how it works. But yeah, I hope this video helps you out if you're looking towards blogging, if you're a programmer and you want to blog, or you don't really have to be a programmer to do it this particular way, um, but it helps. So I think we'll just jump straight in and we'll have a look at how fun it could be blogging in this way. So we jumped onto my computer here, and this is the previous website, well, the older website that I currently use. And this is written in, well, not written, but it's in WordPress. It's okay, I mean, if you're not into programming, and uh, you want to set up a site, sort of roughly customized, WordPress is the way to go. Um, I had a lot of fun setting this all up. I wouldn't say it's wasted time, but it was definitely a good investment um, creating this website. And the reason I want to move away from WordPress is I know how to code, so I don't need to really use a, what we, what's, called, what's known as a content management system. So if I go into here, you'll see that I'm not a big fan because it's quite clunky, there's a lot of things going on. And it doesn't make me want to blog. That's kind of why I don't want to use this. But it's still great. You can put stuff here. And you can yeah, you can have like a, a like a draft post here. But I want to use something different. So I'm using uh, a site called Hugo. And in the past, I have used Ghost before. So Ghost is another sort of similar version of Word, WordPress. It's a content management system, but I think it's a lot less clunky. It's really um, quite sleek. But like I said before, I'm a programmer, so I want to use something like Hugo, which is a static site generator. And basically what Hugo is, is written in Go, and we can turn your markdown into basically a website. And that's how I want to sort of set it up. And it's really quick because they're all static sites. So rather than Ghost or WordPress, which actually extracts information from a database, all the pages are pre-written. So they, they, they just send the pages straight to the, the client. There's no need to query a database, which can take a, a bit longer. And that's kind of how I want to go. Nothing's really secret when I, when I blog stuff, right? So what I'll do is I'm going to show you an example of actually um, turning a post like this, which is the future of the web. It's kind of a post... And yeah, I should say that I'm, I'm actually migrating my old blogs onto this new blog, which I should show you guys actually. So this is the new blog here. XYZ. We'll have a new domain and everything, because like I said, I'm not a big person, so SEO is not a huge deal. And this is the actual um, blog here, the new blog. And it's written in Go, but the theme here is provided by, by a theme called Paper Mod. In the description, I'll link everything that's relevant to the video, but a really cool mod. I added the blue colors, but this is all provided by the theme, which I think is really cool, really simple. I mean, if I want to go to projects I've worked on, people can check that out, projects I'm working on, they'll check about me, who I am, what I'm writing about, my focuses, what I'm focusing on, um, it's a photo of me, and even an archive as well. Something that's really key is having categories, because I do like to write about optometry here and there. I like to write things about life, entrepreneurship, these journeys that I'm on, just sharing my what I've been taught to other people, even though I'm not really an expert, but I think it's just, just good to show that journey if someone else wants to go through it as well. And I think it's nice to have these categories, because I can put programming here, and people can just read up on programming. Or if I have someone who's an optometrist wanting to read up on that stuff, they can read up on that kind of stuff. I think what I'll do is, I'll show you like a method or how I'm going to be actually turning a kind of a post I've done into a blog post. So I'm actually going to be using Vim for that. So let me just get it up for you guys. Here it is here. So this is Vim and I'll just exit out of that. So the beauty of Vim is that it's a simple text editor. So you'll see that I'll just CD into my home directory. So if I go into the actual project, this is the project here. And if I tree it or clear it, and tree. This is the project here, the entirety of the project. Probably makes better sense if I do ls. LA. So if you're familiar with Hugo, you'll know exactly what this is. But like I said, it's all the documentation. I won't do a video on how to start Go or create Go because I think there's excellent documentation. There's already YouTube videos on it. I just want to give this as an example of how I'm using it. If I go into a particular file, so let's say a post that I'm going to be working on is uh, LA CD programming. 
And I think it was the future of the web. So the future of the web, LA. And we'll just go into it. So Vim index. And I think there's a bug, like a known bug with uh, <laughs> with Vim. So this is the actual uh, the relevant information, like the meta information for the blog. Um, and I use Vim. So if I hit this key here, I get into distraction free mode. So I can kind of write some stuff here, which is like nice and clean and really easy to write. I mean, if you use things on the internet, like Notion, a lot of distractions there, but this allows me to write clean sort of, I'm undistracted when I'm writing. So I kind of I kind of want to be using this. And if I go into a post that has stuff in it, probably makes better sense, you'll see what I'm talking about, LA. CD, we go into introduction to PyTest, I guess. This would be a good post index. And you'll see if I go GY. And oh, that's a bit annoying. So you can see I've got um, distraction free, really good, easy, really writing. So this is a plugin called Goyo and Limelight. And I can also, also I'll link all this down in the description below. But this is how I basically write on here, exit out of there. And what it can do is you just commit the code and that code gets automatically updated onto the, onto the, onto the GitHub repository. I can show you um, how it all gets deployed and how it all comes up. So it'll make sense if I, if I actually create a post. So I'll do that now. And where was I? Um, so the future, future of the web. Let me go vim index md. Great, let me go gy. So you can see the problem with uh, this here, so I can go, I can edit the um, actual blog post, I can copy all this, but when I copy it, I'll do one line to show you what I mean, or a paragraph. If I copy it over to here, if for some reason there's some lag, you'll see that the HTML is also included here, which isn't actually useful, we don't want any HTML. I want it to be in Markdown, which is a very specific language that's used for, for writing. So what I've done is I've actually created a, um, a script and what that script does it actually turns this into markdown so if i just copy all this whoops well i didn't really create the script but you know what i mean i, I used a library a python library to um turn this html into markdown so if i control v that there so you can see that there and i think how do i run this is it uh pip inv run main .python main .py. And you'll see that, uh, that that's going to have stuff in there, so that should get overwritten, I think. If I just delete that, move the trash. So if I delete, run Python. So we go into here, and that's the file turned from HTML into Markdown. So I'll copy this, and we come over to here. And for some reason, it's lagging, so I don't know why. If I paste that. Yeah, I'm sorry about this, guys. It's just lagging when you put it into Vim, which shouldn't be the case because Vim is supposed to be really fast. But I think there's a plugin that I'm using that's really slow. So that's all on there. If I go to the top here. I'll just make sure if I want to add an image in there. I think I can get away with it for now. I won't put an image on there. I'll just take that, get rid of that. So that should be fine. And this is actually h3 tags, so you change that to h2 tags, I think it's fine. Cool. So I think it'll be alright. So what we'll do is Siobhan XYZ, so we can kind of see what's going on. In the meantime, you can see it doing everything. So how this is hosted on, it's hosted on this thing called Digital App Platform. So it's not actually hosted on a on a server per se. So DigitalOcean is really cool. So you can either get these droplets, a droplet's like a, you can say it's a mini server or a virtual machine, or you could use uh, a, 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 the app platform, which basically it can look at the code. It can look for any changes in your code through a repository like GitHub. If it sees a change, then it'll automatically update the um, it'll automatically update the production the production website. So I'll just show you what I mean here. Make it a bit bigger as well. So it's a bit slow. So yeah, you can see I've got a few uh, projects on there already, and you can see when it deploys last time. So if I click on here. This is the actual website, and it is a bit slow, guys. So I do apologize. And you can see this is the last deployment that I made. Um, and it's looking at the repository. So, dot com, one, I think dot x1 is the name of the repository. So this is the repository it's looking for here. 
can see there's a visibility error, but it's looking at this repository. If there's any changes, it'll, it'll update the, the blog. So you can see at the moment, there's no blog on workflows. It should post somewhere down here due to the date. So I'll just check all that. So if I go back to not that, but here, and I think what I'll do is I'll commit this. So we go false, set that to false, exit out of that, exit out of it again. Then we just go back to uh, get add content posts programming the future of the web. I think can I just do that? Get status. So we can see we're going to be updating this particular web page. Go to git commit m adding the future of the web. So let's push the code, git push. And you're going to see over here, all right, if we go into the repository, you'll see the repository if I refresh. So that's updating. There's a little test running which will fail. <laughs> and then if you go here, you can see it's starting to build. I think it's really cool. And I think I might be wrong. So digital app platform, it allows you to have three static sites generated for free. So it's not, I'm not getting charged extra for this. If you have something like a, I've got a Python kind of script running or a Django project, that will cost money because you use Python as like a server. But for this, it just needs, it just needs a server to build the file for you. Once it's built, there's no, it's, it's not, querying a server or a database. It doesn't, there's no actual business logic per se. It's just JavaScript, HTML, CSS being sent to the client and the client's computer will be organizing that code for you. So, so still deploying. We can, we can go into the de deployment. You can see it's, it's creating the container and it will deploy hopefully. Fingers crossed. Great, so the deployment went live, which is really cool. And then what we do is we can go into that project if I zoom out because I don't this is like too big if I refresh feed the future of the web there we go so I've dated it today by accident <laughs> it should be the date of when it was posted but I can always change that because see it's here it's all loaded it's all nice to use so yeah Let's jump out. Let's, let's jump out. So guys, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. I kind of hope help you out on your blogging journey. I think it's really life changing how it helped me. It sort of made me more confident to express myself online and really get my ideas out there. I have received emails about how people have read my blog and it's kind of changed their ideas or perspectives. So I kind of hope to do that in the future. I still think I'm quite early in that journey. So if you have any tips for me or any suggestions you'll make down, please please comment down below. Like I said before, I'll have in the description all the, all the sort of stuff that I use, all the important and stuff there if i've missed anything just please let me know down in the comments as always guys stay focused and talk soon